Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna talk about do I need Photoshop as a UX designer? Spoiler, I think you do. Uh, but let's talk about how they work together, what's good about Figma and what you could do in Photoshop. We're gonna cover things like scaling down images ready for Figma. We will look at clear cutting images. Boom. Throwing them into Figma. Here's my little headphones here. Cutting out people and probably some of the monotony and let Photoshop take a lot of the work away for like extending backgrounds. You got places for text and logos and filling hero image boards. All right, all of that and more in this tutorial. Let's jump in. All right, uh, to get started, let's answer the biggest question. Do I need Photoshop skills to become a UX designer or a UI designer? My humble opinion is yes. It's just my opinion, okay? It's just too hard to get away from. Figma does some basic stuff, okay? We've done like, you know, click on an image, go into here, and you can do like saturation and exposure and stuff. And that's what uh, Photoshop does as well. But it's the masking. We can do basic masking, which we've done in this course, but it just doesn't go very far. And the other thing for Photoshop is resizing really large images. Okay, we've been bringing in these ginormous images and just shrinking them down. The file size is really big. So the prototypes start running bad. If you've got a really big okay, uh, mock-up, then all those images do slow things down. The other part is that, I don't know, when you're gonna get hired, if you aren't already hired and you're looking for a job, often they'll be advertising like, hey, UX designer role must have, okay, and Figma might be the UX tool or it might be XD or Sketch, okay, they're all similar, very similar. I've got an XD course if you wanna do that as well. Okay, but uh, so that, and they'll also have probably, and Photoshop skills, okay. Um, there is free alternatives to Photoshop, GIMP is a badly named one. Okay, the other thing to consider is it does, how do you work with Photoshop? So the thing it doesn't do is you can't import Photoshop files. I can't go to, you know, my drafts and go import and go PSD and click open because it doesn't work at the moment. Check your version. Because what a lot of times happens, this might be you right now, okay? People are using Photoshop to do what Figma, like what we've been doing in this course. And it does it okay, and lots of people do. Then they hand it over to somebody like me, okay? Or the new you, and they go, here you go, I've done it. And you're like, oh, to prototype this thing, there's no like open Photoshop file add prototyping. You gotta rebuild it, which is no fun. So that doesn't work at the moment. Check if there's a plugin. There's not at the moment, okay? PSD to Figma. Keep an eye on that one if you do run into it. There might be a solution at some stage. So what we end up doing is in Photoshop, just making stuff and then exporting it for Figma. So what I wanna do is run through a few exercises of what would be awesome, or like some of the, you know, the unique good things about using Photoshop to get into Figma. Now this is gonna be a bit whirlwind. Uh, this is not a Photoshop course. I just wanna throw in some stuff because I wanna show you how you kind of get files for back and forth for the people that are experienced. And the people that aren't, I wanna I wanna try and sell you my, uh, <laughs> my Photoshop course. I got a Photoshop Essentials and Advanced. Okay, so if you've got some self-taught experience, even the Essentials is still pretty good um, for self-taught people. But if you are pretty advanced, check out my Advanced course. And um, so let's do some basics. Let's, the first one is just resizing images because they're coming through too big, right? So if we grab that one, it's 1.4 megabytes. I'm gonna add it into Photoshop. Again, I'm not gonna give you a full tutorial. So if you're like, hey, he went too fast. Mm, that's just, ah, yeah, I don't wanna get into too much tutorial here. Uh, the basics are if you go to file, okay, and you're looking for this export as, okay, this is the amazing one for getting file size smaller in the right format. Okay, I'm gonna say, actually, I don't want it to be like 500 um, pixels across because it's going into one of those thumbnails. It's gonna be a JPEG, okay, and maybe it's going to be 60%. And then you export it, okay? And I'm gonna stick mine on my desktop, messy that up, been trying to keep it nice. And then you can just import that file. Let's kind of compare the two. Let's grab another one. Desktop, where's my desktop? There it is there. So that same file, okay, perfectly fine size-wise, it's 38 kilobytes, okay, which is uh, 0. Yeah, 0. 0.038 megabytes. Okay, where that is 1.4. So you do that a lot, just kind of tidying up images, getting them smaller. And probably the biggest thing is when you are dealing with uh, trying to do masking, okay? It just does it so well in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one here. I'm going to dump it into Photoshop. 
I'm gonna rename the background layer to layer zero. And there's this sweet one, look, remove background. <laughs> How good is that? I love showing people who've used Photoshop for a while, that button. Okay, there is lots of that sort of stuff creeping around in Photoshop now. Okay, so if you haven't given yourself some professional development in Photoshop, or if you've done my course, high five you. You might have already. Ready? High five. Here you go. Okay, but if not, even if it's not my courses, go through the what's new in Photoshop. Okay, it's on the Adobe site. It'll kind of give you a, a kind of a skimmed down version of what's come out since <laughs> 2004 when you last updated yourself. So how do I get this in to Figma now? A couple of ways. Uh, the way we just did, it's probably a good way. Because this has transparency, all we really need to do here is go, actually, the size can get smaller. Not 100, it's too small. And the format just needs to be a PNG. This one will bring through the transparency, and that's really what we want. Size-wise, doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to export it, stick it onto my desktop, messy that desktop up. And then in Figma, I'm going to go... Command Shift K or Control Shift K. And um, where are we? Desktop. Where is that guy? Come on in. What happened to him? Not sure what I did there. Click once. There we go. Even a thousand pixels is pretty big, right? Use the K for scaling. Okay. Oh, you see it. It's already there. I do a little demo just to run through it um, before. <laughs> so it's a little bit more fluid than the ums and the ahs. But anyway, I stuck it in between some stuff here to, I don't know, just try and look cool. Okay, that doesn't work on every single one. I'm like, I, I found this one because it had nice sharp edges uh, to, to try and impress you. It doesn't work on all of them as well as that. Um, another one, let's go for like people. Okay, we're going to be, where is it? Um, let's cut out this guy. So one of the amazing features for Photoshop, okay, is the select subject. If you haven't clicked it, you should. Look at that. Again, it doesn't work on all people all the time, but I'm going to do it. Add a layer mask. Oh, so good. Okay, and I could go back to my, uh, there's things to touch up. You know, I could work on that mask more. But So what we could do is we could go back to our file, export as, and do a PNG. If you're just kind of mocking things up quickly and not as official, you can say so right-click this the mask and just say, let's apply that layer mask. It's gone, it's, you know, it's uh, destructive editing. That's okay, I can just use my marquee tool. Select around, Mr's boot. Okay, and just copy, I'm just using um, Command C or Control C on a PC, and I'm just gonna paste it. Let's paste it somewhere over here. How good is it? Look at the edges, oh. Well, it didn't look that good in Photoshop. It is amazing. I can't believe how good it is. <laughs> All right, so, you get the idea, right? Um, one last thing that is super handy for people who are using Photoshop that might not know about it, it's like the content aware scale stuff. So um, I wanna get him back out of there. Is you might have an image that just needs to be bigger. And I'm gonna flip this one around because <laughs> that's the image that I've decided to use because um, it was in this list. Let's do this one. So I'm gonna add this one to Photoshop. The problem with this image Okay, is I need more background. Happens all the time. We need to put text on it. You need up the top there. So there's a couple of ways you can do it in Photoshop. I'm going to use the crop tool, which is the C, uh, C shortcut. I'm going to turn on the content aware. Content aware is amazing in Photoshop. Do a little bit of time looking at the various content awares. There's about four or five of them. If I do that and hit enter, you ready? You said he? Oh, okay, it's not great, but it's going to do fine for putting text over the top. It's really amazing that way. There's another way of doing it. If that doesn't quite work or you get some weird stuff, I'm going to use that crop tool again. Okay, I'm going to turn off content aware. I'm just going to make it bigger because, you know, let's say you want a really big weird banner at the top or a hero image, okay, along the top of your hero image. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use the rectangle marquee tool and just kind of grab a chunk of it and then go to edit. I'm going to use content aware, but this one's content aware fill. Nope, not the one I want. I'm going to hit escape. I want edit content aware scale. That one there. I said fill. There we go. Scale. And look at that. Hold shift while you're dragging that corner. And you just kind of like make stuff bigger. It has to be like backgroundy, blurry stuff. It doesn't work on everything, but that is good. Again, I could just copy and paste this now because I haven't really done any sort of transparency. So copy into Figma, maybe on my desktop version. Okay, I've got this nice big hero image. 
All right, I'm messing things up. Let's go shift two. You get the idea, right? Let's drag it out. Nice big weird shape. Okay, I'm gonna go paste. Will it go in straight in? It does. Look how good we are. Some sweet Photoshop skills combined with some sweet uh, Figma skills. Professional UX designers, me and you. Okay, that was a long one. I just wanted to touch on some of the Photoshop things that might be useful if you're already a user. I know a lot of you already are. And I picked some super exciting ones that definitely worked in this tutorial. Main, just to see if, you know, come do the course. It's exciting. Cross sell over. All right, uh, that is Figma and Photoshop. I'll see you in the next video. All right, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, consider giving it a thumbs up likey thing and also consider subscribing to the channel. I've got lots more Figma tutorials here. Also, if you do want to go further with Figma, I've got a full course called Figma Essentials. Uh, check out the card up here or link in the description. All right, bye for now.